In this video, we'll be showing the move to the new nest from the old one. We get to see how the ants settle in, some of their antics, and some of the features about the nest, as well as the behavior and biology of Begonia mirmex barbatus. Step one, release the hoard. And of course, do not get stung on the process or you're going to have a very bad day. The old nest here is a Tar Heel Ants Hearth. They've been in there for several years. It served them very, very well. Uh, of course, they've outgrown it at this point. You can see I got behind in cleaning the outworld because there's so many ants trying to get out. <laughs> and that's why we made this formicarium. For those of you who don't know about Tar Heel Ants, they are, in my opinion, the best formicarium makers in the world. They're based in North Carolina with Mac Pridgen. They got everything down to a science. If you want to go buy formicariums already made online or have something custom done for you, they are the people to talk to. The only exceptions I would say are maybe special ants that have special needs, such as um, fungus growing ants for their fungus. The gypsum may not be necessarily the best environment to put them in. But other than that, they work for a whole wide range of species. And they have just turned out very great for everything. 99% of my formicariums are actually Tar Heel ants. So I should say something. They, they know what they're doing and it makes great stuff. And it looks like we have our first taker here, the first explorer in a brave new world. <laughs> Hopefully that will be the first of many and they will all seemingly move in there with no issues. It's probably gonna take a few days or so, but we'll of course not record for that many days. Here you can see the remnants of the original stockpile of the grass seed. And you can see the larvae and pupa around the water towers. The queen's in there somewhere stubbornly hanging out. But uh, until they get the right signals and movements, they're gonna kinda hang out there in a defensive position. While the rest of the ants in this chaos are looking for a place to go and figure out what to do, they got one hole to find, and every once in a while a worker ant's gonna find that, they're gonna drop a pheromone trail, and the more you use it, just like a quorum, they all decide the same, same direction, same area, and the activity continues to increase, and they all move inside. I've go ahead and cover the top, just to encourage them to come into a dark place for the time being. Having a light on them at this stage might actually be just discouraging them from going inside. Here we'll just talk about a little bit about Pagana Mirmex in general as a genus. So they're a seed harvesting ant. Their larvae will feed on seeds and dead insects. And they actually have a unique adaptation under the mandibles like a basket. They take city and hair that forms and curves underneath. So if you ever want to take one of these ants under a microscope and flip them over, you can actually see that basket underneath for their purpose of carrying seeds in larger numbers back and forth across the nest. If you ever see these ants in the wild, you notice that usually it's a large, flat nested area with rocks and pebbles that have been kind of gathered around the edges to increase the heat whenever the sun hits it. And they've cut down all the grass to keep the vegetation clear around the colony as well. And they'll have massive trails in all directions looking for any kind of food source. So they have a very long reach when it comes to trailing. They don't usually keep to a small area. So usually they're very, very noticeable, and it's unlikely you're gonna walk through a nest and not see, hopefully ahead of time, before you start getting stung, because that would be very unfortunate. These ants are monogamous, so you're not gonna find a polygynous colony of these running around. So if you do try to collect a wild colony, be very careful not to hurt the queen in the process. You're better off just finding a newly mated queen after nuptial flight. They tend to do these after rains in the spring and early summer. You'll find these ants in arid areas with sand and dry, dry ground, if they prefer that kind of soil. Um, out here in Texas, you find them anywhere where it's kind of drier, away from forest, more like towards West Texas. If you live on the Gulf Coast, you can find them there as well, where the humidity and the sand meet. And they're pretty easy to find. There's multiple species all across the U.S.
And here we have the queen exploring for the first time inside the nest. She's taking a look around, seeing what's going on, seeing if she likes it or not. And uh, oh, <laughs> she's decided to go right back outside. The frustration, ant keepers know all too well about the queen not going where she's supposed to go. But uh, we'll have to be patient on this one. And here we are for round two, the queen going right back inside. Workers are kind of coaxing her in. Let's see. Uh, looks like we've actually got her to stick around. That's what I thought there, Missy. Here we got a bit of an overview of the nest going on as things are kind of in the middle of settlement. Ants are still moving materials in. They got seeds and larvae to move. The queen's inside, thankfully, so the majority of the rest of the ants now should be following her pheromones and any other activity of other ants. And they should be settling in pretty well now. We've got some humidity over here. These are water towers. I filled them up, of course. I kind of pre-flooded them just to give some moisture as they first go in and make it more enticing. And here we have the queen settled here in the back. All her little tenders and groomers all around her. Got some seeds, various parts back here. You can see some larva against the sand as well. Things are in full swing. This is going quite well. The ants seem to have no issue at all with the formicarium or the materials, which is fantastic. You should always be real careful when you're building a formicarium not to use something as toxic to ants because it defeats the whole purpose. You go to all this trouble to build this, the ants get in and they're dead. And that's just not fun. So always be very careful and do research on what you're using and test things if you have to on smaller populations on workers. Here up here we got some more of the separation of brood seed areas. The front's much drier than the back, so they're going to prefer to do that for pupa as well. Out here we have the outworld. It's still pretty packed. Those ants are doing their best to grab all those grass seed and bring them back inside. I've got two feeders in here. One is for nectar, which is going to be the sunburst nectar. I typically give raw honey to all my ants but I've been using this more lately because it's less likely to ferment and cause the liquid to actually ferment and bubble out of the feeder, causing a mess. And the ants, of course, are loving this. The other feeder has water because I did not think <laughs> the foresight to make a nest mate hole in a way that wouldn't damage the formicarium. Here we have the Kentucky Blue Seed Grass. If you ever go to Tar Hill Ants, they do provide these seeds in little packets if you want to buy them, little convenient things to have, and that seed can last you a very long time for a founding colony. Here they're enjoying their water at the water feeder. I presume it's going to take them a while to go through that. Here I've released some dubia roaches as a first time feeder for them in the formicarium. They're a really good source for food if you can farm them. They're very high in nitrates and fats as well as the proteins. And if you get into a live, which is even better, so they're very easy to keep in farms because they don't have much of a odor, you don't have to feed them very much, and they reproduce very easily. And you can keep them as a source for your ant, as opposed to buying crickets or having them frozen ahead of time to avoid parasites, other things. Just be careful, because if you catch food outside, you never know when someone sprays something like a pest control chemical that can hurt your ants. And of course, ants enjoy doing what's natural to them, which is hunting live or decayed prey that has become a piece of the landscape. And you can see they're just terrorizing that poor doobie roach. Back to another overview here. We are seeing a more settled in now. So the queen's actually changed position. She's over here now at this water tower. A majority of the larva brood have moved here as well. You see workers gather around. You can see how clumsy she is as she trips over the side of the water tower. It's always been something I've noticed about harvester ants. Uh, they can't climb very well. So they look a little clumsy when they go over uneven surfaces like that.
Heading back to the front, we see the ants are once again collecting and organizing seeds in the little pockets. You're also going to see some pupa here on the right. I happen to have a heating pad underneath on the front left side. They're going to want those there where it's drier and warmer to accelerate their development. Usually with nature, with the nest, they keep them closer to the surface where it's warmer and drier as opposed to the ground where there's much humidity beneath with moisture. The moisture is where they want their eggs and their larva at. At this point, they've collected all the seeds and brought them inside. So the activity out in the out world is dramatically slowed down. They're just kind of looking around for things to do, mostly going to the water feeder or the nectar feeder. And you can see some of their activity coming in and out of the nest entrance as well. Here we have another overview. This is just later on. The ants are more organized. They're more moved into where they want to be. The seeds are all in. Activity is slowed down. The, the rush or the panic is over. And they seem to be doing quite well, quite calm with what they're doing. And as you've noticed, they have a bright light on top of them. They're not bothered by it. They've actually adjusted this. And they're not feeling threatened by the potential exposure that they would expect in nature if a ground got ripped up and they had direct sunlight pouring on them. So all in all, this has went really, really well. The move is going well, and I expect this colony to continue to thrive in captivity with this nest. And hopefully this will hold them over for a year or so before I have to make another one. At some point, I'll be making a, a much bigger display for an outworld that's much, much larger to better replicate the conditions they have on the outside in the wild. Because these ants have wide open territories they are constantly foraging in, looking for seed, other insects, and materials. And they go quite a long distance away from the actual nest to get these things. So the small outworld may be good for now, but in the real world, outside, they can go a lot further than that. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more content in the future. I'll be doing my best to make videos just like this, and I'll get better at video editing as well. And I have a ton of different colonies to work with, and I have, of course, a whole host of experience with ants as well as an entomology degree, so I can talk in depth about any of these topics. Anything you personally would like to see that I can do as well. Thank you, and have a great day.